G'day, it's Pete here and I'm back for a learn to play bridge session where today we're going to talk about how to take more tricks during the card play. Now, this is like my favorite part of bridge because it's all about logic and problem solving and like, I just can't get enough of it. It's a really interesting part of the game about how you actually take more tricks. So today what I want to focus on is we'll talk about giving more meaning to the cards so that when we're playing, we want to usually convey information to our partner. So to do this, I want to talk about uh, our opening leads and what they actually mean. So you're first off what you're trying to do with leading. Then I'm going to talk about defending in general. What what general strategies do you have in defense and what do different cards mean in defense? And then I'll talk about being the declarer. How do we actually plan the play of a hand and try and take some more tricks as the declarer? Anyway, uh, we'll jump straight into it and see what we can do. So when uh, we make an opening lead in bridge, we don't get to see the dummy yet and we have to lead something uh, before we do and basically we want to convey information about our hand to our partner now there's a few general things that we do uh, when we're actually going to lead now if we like a cut like a suit because we've got big cards in it we've got picture cards or honors ace king queen jack maybe 10 um, so they're the honors that we uh, count uh, if we like a suit, we, den we tend to lead low from it, say, partner, hey, I've got some good cards here. Whereas if we don't like a suit, and this is also a really good lead, uh, leading away from nothing where you don't have any big cards, uh, you we tend to lead a high card. And this tells partner, hey, don't look for me to have cards in this suit. I don't have any big cards here. Try me to have cards in the other suits. And another one is sometimes we lead big cards, but... What we do for this is they usually promise the ones below it. So uh, let's jump right in and have a look at this. So let's say that uh, the opponent's playing uh, one no trump and we're gonna lead. So we've got this hand here and we have to find an opening lead. So if we like a suit and wanted to lead low, uh, tell a partner we like a suit, say we had just hearts, we've got an honor in hearts, we've got a pitch card. So we could lead the two of hearts. And this would say, partner, I like hearts. Now, another lead that we could make is leading the queen of spades. Now this is called top of the sequence. So whenever you've got a sequence of cards which start with a picture card, so like queen, jack, 10, jack, 10, nine, king, queen, jack, all these sorts of things, leading the top one says, I've got the ones below it. So if you lead an honor, um, ace, king, queen, jack, uh, maybe 10, you're saying that I've got the one below it, definitely, so here I'm promising the jack, and then I've probably got the 10, maybe the 9, so you might lead the queen from queen jack 9, or queen jack 10, things like that. So basically, if you lead a picture card, you're saying that uh, you're leading top of the sequence, and you've really got this suit pretty solid, and these are really good leads. So here, leading the queen would be a good idea. If instead uh, we wanted to tell partner we didn't have anything in one of the suits, if we looked at diamonds here, we don't have anything good in diamonds, we'd just lead our highest diamond. So we'd lead this, the six of diamonds to say, I, I don't like diamonds. Now, it doesn't matter if our diamonds were the three and the two. If we wanted to lead a diamond, we'd just lead our highest one. It doesn't matter that it looks like a really low card. We hope partner can work that out. But basically what you want to think about is when we're looking at all these different suit combinations, if we just want to lead, if we don't have touching uh, honors, so we don't have a sequence, then we tend to lead a low card to say that we like the suit if we have an honor in there. If we don't have an honor in there, we lead a high card to say I don't have, well, we lead our highest card to say I don't have any honors in this suit. And if we've got a string of them, like queen, jack, 10, or jack, 10, nine, or king, queen, jack, or ace, king, then we lead the, type, the highest one to say, hey, I've got the one below this and I've got a good holding in this suit. Really uh, strong holding. Um, this is generally what we're trying to do with our leads and our partner can interpret things from that. There are a few more uh, details to this. So um, one exception is that if we've got a shortage, a doubleton, we'll always lead top of a doubleton. So um, when you've only got two cards in the suit, it's a doubleton. Um, 
You might choose to lead singletons, probably not against no trumps, but uh, against suit contracts. If you've just got one card in suit, then you could try leading a singleton as well. But if I had, say, jack five of diamonds, I would still lead my jack. And partner would initially think that I've got top of a sequence there, but they might be able to see looking at dummy that I don't actually have that. The general idea of leads. If you've got a shortage, you can lead top of your shortage, even if it's an honor. Um, it's pretty rare that you do this, but it is one of the exceptions. So just a quick recap of your leads. If you've got a sequence of honors, queen, jack, 10, jack, 10, nine, we can lead top of that. Now, if you don't have uh, like a sequence of honors, let's say you've got uh, nine, eight, seven, or uh, eight, six, uh, eight, seven, six. Now these are sequences, but they're not honor sequences. So we don't uh, care about calling them sequences. So just to recap the leads, top of a sequence, low from an honor, top of nothing. These are the general things that we try and do with our uh, leads. We also lead top of shortages. And sometimes what we do is, uh, let's look at another hand here is when we're leading, we also want to tell partner a little bit about our length here. So if we were leading on this hand, um, if we wanted to lead a spade, we've got nothing in spades, so we'd lead a high card. In hearts, we've got a sequence in hearts, so we can lead a top heart. If instead we had something in spades and we liked it, say we swapped this eight of spades uh, for the king and we wanted to lead a spade. What we actually do is lead fourth highest from our longest and strongest. So if we've got, if we like spades and wanted to lead that and we had an honor in there, say the king or the queen or the jack, um, what we'd do is we'd lead our fourth highest. So with king seven, six, three, two, um, the fourth highest would actually be the three. Okay. And what this means is partner can tend to work out how long our suit is as well as working out that we like it or not. So this is a really powerful way of deducing how many cards there are in the suit, what pa whether partner likes it or not. So if I uh, jump over to an, the other hand, and let's say that it went one no trump, and um, we defended, and our partner led the three. Okay, so we would tell that our partner likes the suit, that they've got led low from an honor. So what can we work out? So they like spades and we can see that uh, the ace king is in the dummy and we've got the jack 10. So what honor would our partner have? Well, they would have the, the queen um, because they like it and we can see all the other ones. So we can start placing cards by using this information. Also, how many spades do we think our partner has? Well, they led the three. Now, if they're leading from long suits that they like, they're usually four cards or longer. So does it have to be a four card suit? Could it be a five card suit? Could it be a six card suit? These are the types of questions you want to be able to ask yourself. So here, when partner leads the three, if they're going to lead the fourth highest card, uh, this could be from four cards. Could also be from five cards because they could have the two, the three, and um, the three could be their fourth highest. And if you think about how many cards could be below it, well, the two of spades is below it. So it could be from a five card suit, but can it be from a six card suit? No, it can't because if partner was leading their fourth highest and if they had a six card suit, that would mean that they have one, two cards below it. And there's only one card below that three. So there's no way that uh, your partner could be leading from a six card suit in this instance. So this is some of the information that's given by leading and how you can interpret it from uh, your partner's perspective. So again, quick recap of what our leads actually mean. We lead top of the sequence if we've got honors. So jack 10, nine, uh, queen, jack 10, king, queen, jack, ace, king. These are really good leads. Uh, if we want to tell partner we like a suit, we can lead low from an honor and we t where an honor is a picture card, ace, king, queen, jack. And we'll lead uh, fourth highest if we have four cards or longer. So if we've got four, five, six cards to an honor, we would lead our fourth highest one. Uh, if we don't like a suit, we'll lead a high card. So if we have nine, eight, seven, we'd lead the nine. If we've got nine, six, two, we'd lead the nine. If we've got five, four, two, we'd lead the five. Just the highest one to say, I don't actually like it. 
And we hope our partner can interpret that. If we've got a shortage, we've got a singleton or a doubleton, we lead the highest card. So if it's singleton, we've only got one to lead. If it's a doubleton, we've got two cards, we can lead our highest card in that instance. One final thing about leading, which is against suit contracts, we don't want to lead suits with unsupported aces. Now this is important. So if you've got the ace but not the king, this is what's called an unsupported ace. So we don't want to lead against suit, con suit contracts. We don't want to lead unsupported aces. So we don't want to lead the ace and we don't want to lead low from the ace. We don't want to under lead the ace. Against no trumps, this is not an issue at all. It's only against, against suit contracts that you want to uh, be wary of this and don't uh, lead away from unsupported aces in suit contracts, at least on the opening lead. Later in the hand, you can do it. The opening lead before you see dummy, do not uh, lead that suit. So that's just a little bit about leads. Let's uh, look at one more uh, hand just to see what would we actually lead from uh, this different holdings. So if uh, the opponents end up in uh, four spades, okay, so what would we lead here? So in each suit, what would we want to do? Firstly, they're in a suit contract. We don't want to lead away from unsupported aces. So in hearts, we don't want to lead this suit at all. So we would pick a different suit. If we wanted to lead trumps, we could lead the eight. If we wanted to lead clubs, we could lead the 10 because we don't have anything good in clubs. Remember, we only count like ace, king, queen, jack for low from an honor. So tens, we don't want to do that. So you could lead the 10. Diamonds, we could lead the two. And now partner will also, when we lead the two of diamonds, partner will work out two things. Firstly, we like diamonds. Secondly, we can't have more than four diamonds um, because if we had five, we'd be leading um, our fourth highest and not the two. So they can use that inference to start working out how many cards we've got and start building an idea of where the missing cards are. So having these rules is really useful for like understanding the logic and placing the cards and sort of putting all those puzzle pieces together. So you want these sort of basic rules, understand how they work, understand how to interpret them. Now there are a few more uh, that I haven't explained here, but this is the general idea of what you're trying to convey with your leads. The uh, next thing that I wanted to talk about is defense. Okay, so we'll move on to a new hand. Now, when we're defending, the main goal of the defense is to try and work out how can we beat the contract that the opponents are in. So if they're in four spades, they need to make 10 tricks to make their contract. For us to beat them, we need to take four tricks. So in defense, your main goal is trying to work out how could I possibly get enough tricks to try and beat the opponents? So you don't want to just go, oh, I want to take this card now or that card now or that card. You want to think, okay, I can take this one now, but where are the other ones coming from? This is your general strategy in defense. I'm not going to go into it too much further than that because uh, it's a really tricky topic and it would take more time than I've got now to actually go onto it. But as long as you are thinking about that, then you are thinking along the right lines. What I want to cover today is some general strategies of what cards you should be playing when you're not 100% sure about what you want to do. Now, the general strategies, are if you're the second person to play to a trick, you tend to want to play a low card. If you're the third player to play to a trick, you tend to want to play a high card. And if the opponents lead an honor, you want to cover an honor with an honor if you have one. Okay, so I want to go through why they work why they don't work and help you understand the why about this so that you can actually bring this into your game more and don't just follow these rules blindly understand why they operate what you're trying to achieve with them and then when you should actually use them um, but that it's important to, to understand how what you're meant to do so uh, let's say that uh, the opponents get to three no trump and we lead a diamond. Um, you could have led a spade, you could have led a heart, a club, that's fine. Um, when I led a diamond, notice I led my uh, fourth highest. It's always important to remember how this works. So here, let's say they win and the opponents lead a spade. Okay, so what should we do? So they've led a low spade. Uh, so what should we do? Now, 
The general idea is when we're playing, second hand usually wants to play a low card. Now, why is this? It's usually because your partner will get um, another chance to possibly beat it. Um, also, sometimes if we fly with a high card here, if we put the king, we don't capture any good cards at all. They just play low cards, they keep it all in reserve. Now, if I open it up and uh, show all the cards, we can see exactly why we don't want to put the king on it this time. If we hopped up with the king, then our partner would have to put it on their ace as well, and we'd only get one trick in spades combined. Whereas if we play low, they put in the queen, they get the ace, we'll score our king later. So basically we're not rushing to try and uh, get our tricks. Uh, we'll be able to get our king later in the hand. So with second hand low, the general idea is partner will usually have a chance to possibly beat it. Or also, um, if we hopped up with our high card, we wouldn't be capturing good cards at all. Um, so we don't need to tend to rush to try and get our tricks. Now, the times that we do want to get our tricks is when you can see how we're going to beat the contract. Remember, uh, we want to, our main goal is to try and beat contracts. If you can see a way to get enough tricks that you're going to be beating a contract, go for it. Go do that. That'll help you, like, that's, that's our ultimate goal in the defense. So try, like, if we get a chance to beat it, make sure you jump at that chance and really uh, <laughs> don't duck tricks that uh, will allow the opponents to make contracts. That's not a great idea. But with second hand low, we usually want to give our partner a chance to possibly beat it. We want to get a chance for our, our cards to be beating uh, other people's cards. Uh, but if we can spot a way to beat the contract by hopping up, then that's a pretty good idea. So uh, we'll go back and just look at our hand. Uh, if we bring up another one. So again, we're just really focusing on the spades for all these in, uh, defense illustrations. But let's say that uh, the opponents get to three no trumps again. And let's say that we lead a high heart. Um, to say, hey, I don't like hearts. And they win and they lead a low spade. Okay, so what should we play here? So. If we play low, we know that they're going to put the king on it and win it. But if we put up, and there's no chance that partner can beat it. So should we put our ace up here? Now, the answer is still actually no. So let's, let's look at the whole hand again. Now, yes, we know that uh, if we play low, they're going to score a trick. But if we put up with the ace they're going to get that king of spades later anyway. So it's not an issue that they're going to win the trick. Here we still want to try and play low, and it will force them to uh, put up their king. And they got a spade. Notice that if we put up our ace, they would have got their king later. But also they'd be able to score their uh, queen separately, because if we go up with our ace, they've got the king over there, and they've got the queen over there, and they both get to capture it. Our ace did not capture any of their good cards. So what we actually want to do is play second hand low, they get their king, and now if they return a spade, um, if they put in our queen, in their queen, we get to capture their queen, and now their queen doesn't get a trick, but our partner's jack does. So here, by playing second hand low, not going for that immediate satisfaction of getting that trick, we've held on and we now get, our side now gets to get multiple spade tricks, Whereas if we hopped up with the ace just because we could see that their king was going to win, then they would actually get two spade tricks, which is really not a good idea. So again, bridge is not about that immediate reward. It's a long term. You've got 13 cards. You want to try and uh, get the most out of them. So don't worry that they're going to get a trick if you play low. Playing low is fine because uh, second hand usually wants to play low and try and capture stuff in the uh, later. Now, there are a few exceptions, um, like them getting, us getting the setting tricks, or sometimes we need to get on lead earlier than our partner, or we know that uh, we've got like a sequence and they could play something really low and um, like if we had queen jack 10 uh, and a small card, we probably don't want to put in the small card, but maybe one of our middle cards to force them up. But there are a few exceptions there. So that's the first one. Second hand usually plays low. The next one that we want to talk about is third hand uh, playing high. 
And let's say that uh, they're in uh, three no trump. And uh, they laid a low spade. Okay, so here, even if they're in a suit contract and you know that West has the ace, like if they're in a suit contract, you'd know West has the ace because your partner wouldn't lead low from an unsupported ace. When uh, they put in a high card, uh, put in a card from Dane, we want to put in our king, okay? So even if we know that it's gonna lose to the ace, so let's uh, open this up so that we can see all the cards again. Okay, so let's just look at the spades here. So our partner led low from four spades to the jack, and we've got the king. So even though we our king is going to lose the ace, and they've still got the queen, we still need to put in our king of spades. The whole idea of third hand plays high is we want to try and promote later tricks for either our side or our partner. So if we look at this, if we play low, what's going to happen? Right. They're going to be able to score their eight of spades. They're going to win this really cheaply. And this is something you want to avoid with third hand high. Now, also, our king of spades isn't going to win a trick later because they'll be able to take a finesse. You remember that play that we talked about in the first lesson where they've got the ace queen. They could lead over towards the ace of hearts. And they could lead a spade towards the ace queen, hoping that uh, we have the king. So... Even though I don't waste my king on the first trick, I still don't get it later on this hand. But they score a, a trick really cheaply there. So, if we backtrack, if we play low, they get three tricks in spades. I don't get my king of spades, it's wasted. Uh, but if I put up my king, yes, they get to beat it. They get to put in their ace of spades. But notice, my partner's jack of spades comes into play. Their jack of spades will be able to get a trick. So they don't get three tricks in spades. They only get two. So the whole idea with third hand high is you're trying to promote something for either you or your partner. Okay. Uh, so if there's a chance that uh, your partner will be able to win a trick, um, eventually you want to be putting in, putting in a high card. All right. So let's look at another example of this. So we'll go back to the south hand, bring up a new deal. And this time, uh, yeah, again, three no trump. And we'll say another low spade lead. And I'll show all the hands again, actually. Okay, so this time partner led away from the queen 10. If we uh, put in a low card, then declarer will be able to win a spade cheaply. They just get to win the nine of spades. And then they'll also get their ace of spades. Okay, if we put in the uh, king of spades, Yes, then uh, Clara will win the ace and our king will get beaten. But what will happen is our partner now has the queen 10 of spades and they're sitting over the jack nine. So they'll be able to take two spade tricks here. So again, by playing third hand high, even though it, our trick lost, we promoted something for our partner, which allowed us to get more tricks later. So it's really important to understand how this actually works. All right, and we'll look at uh, one more. Let's say now that again, they get to uh, three no trumps. And we're just looking at the spades. Our partner leads the nine. We can use the lead information to place where the ace, the queen and the jack are. We know our partner doesn't like the suit, so West has all of them. So if we remember, what was the point of third hand high? It was to try and promote stuff for either you or your partner. Now, if partner doesn't like the suit and we've only got our king, we aren't going to be able to promote anything for our partner. So here, we don't need to put on in third hand high. We can just play low. Now, we won't actually score a trick in spades on this hand, but we make them do some more work. They have to keep finessing and uh, do some extra work with that. But there's no benefit to playing third hand high here if we can't promote anything for our partner. One other note, um, is that uh, when you're being led to, so when you're leading cards, we said we lead top of a sequence. In third hand, if you've got uh, touching cards that you wanted to play, so let's say uh, partner led a diamond, 
Uh, here we'd probably put on the Ace of Diamonds. Sorry, partner shouldn't lead the three, they should lead the five. Uh, we should put on the Ace of Diamonds. Now, assume that we don't have the Ace of Diamonds. When you are being led to, um, and you're third to play, uh, what you want to do is play the lower of touching cards. So when your partner leads to you, you want to play the lower of touching cards. So here, if we uh, um, had Jack-10 and not the Ace, we wouldn't put the Jack on it, we'd play the 10. We want to play the lower of touching cards. Now there's a way that partner can use this to work out information about where the missing cards are. But, uh, another important principle there, which is when partner leads to you, uh, you want to play the lower of touching cards when you've got it. Whereas if you're leading, you want to play the higher of touching cards. All right, so that was uh, third hand high. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is cover an honor with an honor. Okay, so the general idea here is when they lead an honor, if you can beat it with an honor, it's usually right to play. Um, and now the principle of this is very similar to third hand high. Now this usually happens in second position when your common card is to play second hand low. But let's say that uh, they get to throw no trump again. And uh, let's say we lead the ten of clubs. And it goes low, low, and they win the ace. Okay. If they lead the queen of spades, we should put the king on it. Now, the whole idea with cover an honor with an honor is to try and promote something for either you or your partner. Now, if there's no chance to promote that, then you don't need to cover it. But if we open it up and see what happens here. So, so here, if they led the queen from queen third, which would be terrible play, by the way. Uh, there's no real win case because we can just cover here. Uh, but if they did, we, we want to try and cover an honor with an honor. And the idea with this is that we promote our partner's jack-10. So if uh, we cover, then our partner will score their jack and 10 of spades and we get two tricks. But if we don't cover it because we see the ace and that we're going to lose to the ace, then they just play low. And now they get two tricks. So whenever someone leads an honor, you want to cover an honor with an honor. Um, if you can promote stuff for either you or your partner, it's really important to come to grips with the idea of why we're trying to do these things. Um, whereas here, if they led the queen of spades on this hand with queen fourth opposite ace jack to nine, we wouldn't want to cover it here. So if they're in uh, three no trump, Let's say that we could only just see uh, this in dummy, and then they lead the uh, queen of spades. Now here we can see the ace, the jack, the 10, the nine. So we know that uh, covering is not a good idea on this hand. So here we wouldn't want to do it. We would just want to play low because there's no chance that we promote something for either us or our partner. Because we can see if we play the king, then the jack, the 10, the nine will just win. So in this case, we don't need to do it. But if there is a chance that uh, we promote something for either us or our partner, we want to try and cover an honor with an honor. So there were our three defensive card play maxims. Uh, second hand low, third hand high, cover an honor with an honor. And I touched on if you're being led to, if you're the third person to play, you want to play the lower of touching cards. Um, so if you've got jack 10, you'd play the 10. If you've got queen jack, you'd play the jack. Um, if you have to play one of these. Obviously, if uh, the second hand's winning a trick, then you don't actually need to do that. All right, so next I wanted to talk about uh, planning the play uh, as declarer. So if we get to uh, four hearts on this hand, okay, and they lead the uh, king of spades. All right, so how do we actually go about planning the play of a hand as declarer? Because we can see lots of cards, we're in control of two hands, and we want to work out how do we best handle this. All right, so the general idea of the is the six steps that we want to go through. The first one is the goal. Work out what are we trying to achieve when we're declaring the hand. So here we're in four hearts, so we need to take 10 tricks, which means we can lose three cards. This is our main goal. Um, the secondary goal is if you can safely make 10 tricks, start thinking about extra tricks. Or if you know you can't make your contract, make sure you minimize how much you go down. These are your secondary goals. 
The second thing that you want to do in a suit contract is do something called counting losers. Um, now, first of all, we have to set an anchor hand. Now, what to do this, uh, we look at the hand which has the most trumps. So here, the south hand's got five hearts and the north hand's got four. So we'll look from uh, the south hand. Okay. And basically what I think of is we can use the high cards from dummy as well. But if we played the highest card, second highest, and all the way down, which cards would win and which cards would lose? So what we want to do is count our losers. So in hearts, if I led the king of hearts out, it would lose to the ace. But then the queen, jack, ten, nine, it would all win. So we've got one loser in hearts. In spades, I've got the ace of spades. And then I've got the three and the two. I've also got the six and five in dummy. But basically the ace will win, and then the next two will lose. In diamonds, I've only got two diamonds. Now you can only have as many losers as you have uh, length in the suit. Uh, so I've only got two diamonds, but dummy's got the ace and king. So if we cash the ace, we cash the king, we're good, we don't have no diamond losers. And then uh, in clubs, I've got the ace of clubs, and then I got the king of clubs, and then another club. So I have one club loser, I have two spade losers, and I have one heart loser. So here, two heart, uh, two spades, one heart, and one club. So we've counted our losers, and we've got four, but we need to get it down to uh, three, because that was our goal. So after that, what we have to then do is look at the different techniques of how we can reduce losers. Now, if we go back to the first lesson, I talked about three different ways that we can reduce losers. One was taking a finesse, where you lead up towards your big cards, your ace queens, your kings, things like that, Hope that the missing cards are on the side. The second technique is dumping, where if you have a spare winner in dummy and they're longer than you in a suit that's not trumps, uh, you can play that and throw away a loser in a different suit. The third technique is trumping, which is kind of the reverse, where dummy is, or the non-anchor hand, is shorter than you in a side suit, and you have losers in that side suit, you can play it when they're out of it and then trump it. So that was, uh, you have to work out which technique you can use on a hand. So here on this hand, we can't take any finesses because uh, we've got, we don't have any honors where we're missing relevant ones attached to it. Um, we can't trump anything because dummy is not shorter than us in any suit except trumps. Um, but we can do the dump technique where if we cash the ace king, we've got uh, these diamonds where dummy is longer than us in diamonds and they have a spare winner in diamonds. So once we play the third round of diamonds, we'll be out of diamonds and we'll just be able to discard something, uh, a loser on that third round of diamonds. Okay, so that's the technique that we're gonna use. The fourth thing you have to do is manage your entries. So for this, you, want, you can get between different hands at different times. So not only when you win a trick, uh, do you just win that, but you're also in that hand. So when I play the Ace of Diamonds, I'm in the hand with the Ace of Diamonds. So what you want to do is work out when do you want to be in each relevant hand. So here, uh, to do the dump technique, I want uh, to be in the North hand when I'm out of Diamonds in the South hand. So after the Ace King of Diamonds, I'll already be there, so my entries are fine. The fifth thing that you want to do is consider drawing trumps. So. How many trumps are out? This time I've got five here, four there is nine, so there are four missing. So you usually wanna draw trumps. Sometimes you might need to do the work beforehand of uh, reducing your losers. So you have to work that out. Do I draw trumps first or do I do it later? And then, um, then we just wanna summarize all the plan into uh, sort of a one sentence, call it the work, and this will tell us how we wanna play the hand. Um, basically what we want to do on this hand, win the ace of spades, start drawing trumps. It's a good idea to draw trumps here. If you're in any doubt, drawing trumps is a pretty good idea. There are a few exceptions to drawing trumps, such as like you might go down if you start drawing trumps too early, uh, you might need entries to get between hands, or you might lose control of the trump suit if you do it, but uh, in general you usually want to draw trumps. So the work on this hand is to win the spade and start drawing trumps. Let them have their spades, finish drawing trumps, and then uh, discard my club loser on the good diamonds. 
and you don't need to worry about too much else. So we win and we play the King of Hearts. And the opponents win and we can see, okay, we started with nine hearts, there are four out, they've now played two, so there are only two left. They get to get their spades, but they're always gonna get them. And then another spade. And then a club. And we play another top heart, and both opponents follow, so all the trumps are drawn. Okay, so the first part of work's done. We can then go on to the second part, which is uh, discarding our club loser on the diamonds. So we are now out of diamonds, and we have this spare winner. So we can discard our club loser, and our club's gone. And now uh, we've got the king of clubs and only trumps and can make this contract. Let's look at another example hand. Uh, this time we're only in two hearts by south. And we get the king of spades lead. All right. So, uh, again, uh, the, the steps that we want to go through. First one, the goal. Uh, we want to take eight tricks, or we can handle five losers. Step two, count your losers. Pick an anchor hand, the hand with the most number of trumps. Here I've got five, dummy's got four. Usually it'll be your hand, it won't always be your hand though. And it's important to recognize when dummy has more trumps than you. Uh, so here, my hand's the anchor hand, and we have no heart losers, because I got the ace, the king, then the queen, then the jack. Um, so nothing in hearts is gonna lose. In spades, I got three spades opposite three. I'm missing the ace, the king, the queen, so I have three spade losers. In diamonds, I've only got two diamonds opposite four little diamonds. So here, I'm going to lose two diamond tricks. It doesn't matter that my partner's got longer, worse diamonds. I can only lose the amount of diamonds that I have in my hand. In clubs, I have one club loser. I have the ace, then the king, and then I got the two, and uh, nothing in dummy will be that. So I have one club loser, two diamonds, and three spades. So uh, that's my initial count. I've got six losers. And what technique do I want to do? Well, I can't finesse, and dummy doesn't have any good spare winners, so I can't uh, use. I uh, can't dump any losers. But I can trump. Dummy is shorter than me in a side suit. And I have losers in that suit. So in clubs, I could play the king of clubs, the ace of clubs, and then trump a club. So that's the technique I want to use. When Then I want to manage entries. When do I want to be in each hand? I want to be in the south hand once north is out of clubs. So that means in clubs, I want to win the ace of clubs on the second round. Then do I want to draw trumps first or later? Yes, I want to draw trumps straight away. Um, but I need to make sure I've got a trump in dummy to actually win it. Uh, trump a club. So if hearts break terribly and they're 4-0, I can't draw all four rounds of hearts. But if they break anything better than that, I'll be okay. Now to summarize the work, I'll let them have their spades and diamonds. When I get in, draw trumps, then play king of clubs, ace of clubs, rougher club, and then I'll be good. So on this hand, uh, they just king of spades, queen of spades, and another spade. And ace of diamonds. King of diamonds. Diamond, and we can trump that. And we want to draw trumps, so how many trumps did we have? Don't, like, it's best to do at the start of hand, um, because otherwise you might forget that you trumped in. But we had five hearts, dummy had four hearts, so there are, we had nine, there are four missing, so let's just count them down. So ace of hearts, king of hearts, and they both broke, so all the trumps are gone, they're down to zero. And now we just wanna trump, uh, trump the club. So club over to the king, and we want it to be in the south hand when north is out of clubs. We've now done that, and now we can just trump this club, and we've made our contract. Okay, one final hand to uh, look at. Uh, again, we'll be in four hearts. And the opponents lead the uh, king of clubs. All right, so again, what's our goal? 
Our goal is 10 tricks and hearts. We can handle three losers. Uh, next, we want to count our losers. So pick the anchor hand. Again, our hand's the hand with the longer trumps. It doesn't always have to be. Make sure you always look for the hand with the longer trumps. If they're both equal, you can pick either hand. Uh, but here, um, we have no heart losers. In spades, we've got the ace, the king, and then the two, but dummy's got the queen, so we've got no spade losers. In diamonds, we do have a diamond loser. If we play the ace, that'll win, but then the queen will lose to the king of diamonds, so we have one diamond loser. And in clubs, we've got three little clubs, three opposite there, so we've got three club losers, one diamond loser. Okay. Uh, what technique can we use? Well, dummy doesn't have any spare winners in suits that are longer than us, because um, they're only longer than us in diamonds, but they're three little diamonds. Uh, they're not shorter than us in any side suit, so we can't trump any losers. But we can take a finesse. We've got this ace-queen position where we can lead towards our ace-queen and hope that east has the king of diamonds. It means that we can take a 50-50 proposition uh, to make this contract. Next, we want to manage our entries. So uh, to take the finesse, we need to get up to this north hand to lead a diamond. And to do that, we can win this queen of spades. So when we get win with the queen of spades, we have to take this diamond finesse right then and there, because that's the only time we're going to get to that north hand. Do we want to draw trumps first? Yes. How many trumps do the opponents have? Well, I've got five. Dummy's got four. So there are nine. So there are four missing. Um, yeah, so let's go about it. So top club, top club, and another club. They win, and they lead a spade. So we'll just win it here first, because we want to draw trumps first before taking the diamond first. So we cash a top heart, and another top heart, and they broke 2-2 two, two again, so all the trumps are gone. Now we want to just get up to the north hand, so we'll play a low spade, because we want to take the diamond finesse. We are in the north hand with the queen of spades. Now's the time to lead a diamond. Hope east has the king of diamonds. When they lead low, we just put in the queen. If west has the king, we were going down. There was nothing we could do about it. If east has it, we had a fifth, uh, we'll had a fifth. we get to make this contract. Um, so we did all we could to try and take those tricks. Today it works, the finesse worked and we make our 10 tricks because we only lost those three club tricks. Anyway, that's how I like to make a plan on a hand. Um, this is all I wanted to cover today. Uh, we covered quite a bit. Uh, so we talked about leads in the start, um, where you lead fourth highest from your longest and strongest, uh, low from an honor, top of nothing, saying you don't like the suits, or from shortages. Um, we also talked about defending, what cards you meant to play when you're defending. So second player usually plays low. Third hand usually plays high with the idea of promoting something either for you or your partner. If the opponents lead an honor, you want to cover an honor with an honor. If uh, your third hand to play and you've got touching cards and you're going to play one of them, you want to play the lower of touching cards. Okay, so that was just a general bit about defense. Overall in defense, your idea with defending is how can we beat this contract? What cards do I need to partner to have to allow us to beat it? What tricks are we going to get? This is your overall goal in defense. And then I talked about planning the play as declarer, where the six steps I like to go through. First step, what's your goal? Second step, count your losers. Third step, uh, how can I reduce my losers? Dump, trump, or finesse. Uh, fourth step, manage your entries. When do I want to get to different hands? Uh, then draw trumps. Do I want to draw trumps now or later? And how many trumps do the opponents have? And then final step, the work. Summarize it. Give yourself a one sentence uh, plan of how you're going to attack this hand. Uh, the, all I talked about was planning the play in suit contracts. Planning the play in no trumps is a bit different. Um, but I'm not going to go into that today. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this learn to play bridge lesson and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.